This video talks a little bit about a topic of interest in my book, Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, 5th edition. My name is Stan Gibalisco, as you might have gathered by reading this screen. And my book, the 5th edition of Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, has some information about ferromagnetic cores in coils. Actually, all editions of this book have this information. But I have before me the fifth edition, and the information appears in chapter 10. Figures 10-7, 10-8, and 10-9 on pages 177 and 179 in chapter 10 talk about ferromagnetic materials or ferromagnetic core materials in coils. This particular example right here is a solenoid configuration of ferromagnetic core. This is a toroid configuration of ferromagnetic core. And this is a configuration known as a pot core. Now the solenoidal core is rod-shaped. That's where the term solenoid comes from. It is a rod-shaped core and if you have uh, a device that can move this rod in and out of the surrounding coil, you can vary the inductance. That is one of the principal advantages of a solenoidal core. But there are also certain limitations and disadvantages one of them being that the magnetic field that surrounds this coil extends outside of the core and into the surrounding space. So you need to leave a little bit of space between, a little bit of physical space between a solenoidal coil of any kind and the surrounding components. Otherwise, those components are likely to affect the inductance of the coil slightly and you can also have a problem with coupling between the coil and the components particularly if they are other solenoidal coils but also just the leads and the foil runs in circuit boards and the component leads and things like that can inter interact with this. So in order to overcome that problem engineers developed in the 19 well they became relatively more popular during the 1960s and 70s the toroidal core which is a donut shaped core when you wrap the wire around this kind of a core the magnetic flux tends to remain confined almost entirely within that core so there is very little uh, coupling to the outside in addition to that, it takes fewer turns around a ferromagnetic toroidal core with a specific permeability. It takes fewer turns than it would take under the situation of a solenoidal ferromagnetic core, largely because the magnetic flux is entirely confined within the core material. So by using fewer turns of wire you can get more inductance. That means lower loss and a higher Q factor. Q factor is sometimes of importance in inductors. If you want to have a tuned circuit with a very sharp selectivity property, that is to say a very narrow, sharp band pass or band rejection response or a very steep low pass or high pass filter cutoff uh, curve. So that is one of the advantages of cores like this besides the fact that there is essentially no coupling to external components. So you can actually mount one of these toroids directly on a metal chassis and you will not have any effect on the coil's performance. You can't really do that with a 
solenoidal coil like this. The, one of the disadvantages and limitations, though, of the toroid is it's a lot harder to continuously vary the inductance. You can vary it with taps in increments, but continuously is much more difficult. The last kind of uh, core that I'd like to talk about here is known as the pot core, P-O-T. Like uh, it, it's shaped kind of like a pot. It, and unlike the uh, other types of cores, instead of wrapping the wire around the core, you wrap the core around the coil of wire. And you can see from this um, blown apart diagram here how this thing actually works. You, you create your coil, you put it inside of this form, and then you bring the two pieces of the shell together and screw them together with this bolt and nut. Then you can screw that entire assembly down onto a metal chassis, a circuit board, or whatever, and the magnetic flux will be pretty much entirely confined to the core, just as is the case with a toroid. And one of the big advantages of these pot cores is the fact that you can get a lot more inductance from one of these with a given number of wire turns than you can even with a toroidal core, assuming that the permeability of the ferromagnetic material is the same in either case. So I have actually wound inductances in pot cores like this with uh, values upwards of one Henry. That's a lot of inductance, so a very, f a very small number of turns will still give you a lot of inductance, and so these types of coils are very useful in audio frequency or baseband tuned circuits. You won't see audio filters very often anymore that use uh, inductance and capacitance circuits. More often you will find them with operational amplifiers and uh, resistors and capacitors instead. But you still can do this and in some of my very low frequency experiments, which I hope someday to do in the Bighorn Mountains of Wyoming or the remote passes in the mountains of Montana, somewhere far, far away from the utility power lines, very low frequency, VLF, below 30 kilohertz, all the way down to 10 kilohertz as far as allocations go or 3 kilohertz technically and possibly even below that. I've never heard the expression ultra low frequency, ULF, but that would correspond to what is more commonly called the baseband, which would be 300 hertz to 3 kilohertz. If you listen on those frequencies with a very sensitive receiver and a, you'd need a tuned circuit like this to tune in uh, the various frequencies, you can actually hear, or so I have been told, the echoes of spherics reverberating around in the Earth's magnetic field all the way around the whole planet and they say that it sounds sort of like birds chirping or something like that. But I want to conduct experiments like that. I want to hear that. They say you can also hear the aurora. But anyway, so it'd be fun to sit out in the Big Horn Mountains of Wyoming some winter isolated from everything and everybody, except to watch and listen to the aurora and sit there with my venerable dog and hope that I don't break my arm or leg or something because you don't get help out there in those remote parts. If something goes wrong, you got to deal with it yourself. But that's enough uh, ranting and raving from an old coot. Ham radio operator, by the way. My call sign is W1GV, Whiskey One Golf Victor. 
That's how I learned all about electronics and everything I know about electronics from my amateur radio experience dating all the way back to 1966. But anyway, these are the three main types of ferromagnetic cores. The solenoid, which allows for variable inductance, continuously variable inductance, but also has the disadvantage of causing some interaction with other components. The toroidal core, donut shaped, more inductance, no interaction with outside components. And the pot core, still more inductance, no interaction with outside components here either. So with that I will say so long from the Black Hills of Dakota Territory United States of America, visit me on my website at sciencewriter.net. You don't need to capitalize the S. This program does that for me, but you don't need to. Sciencewriter.net a lot of information about my books and supplemental study materials for them.